Combat flamethrowers are spectacular, terrifying weapons, first seeing mass deployment in the trenches of the First World War. The Second World War would be just as brutal as the first. More capable, more powerful devices had entered production since then. However, they were still very easy to spot and still very vulnerable. But what if you could put them behind armour plate? Germany would attempt this six times throughout World War II, with varying degrees of success. This is the story of the Flampanzer, Germany's World War II flame tanks. Thanks to Call of War for sponsoring this video. If tanks and vehicles are something that interests you, Call of War is a free online PvP strategy game that allows you to lead a real country during World War II. You can fight up to 100 players in real time, strategic battles that can take weeks to complete. You can use a huge variety of units to defeat your foes, including tanks, aircraft, battleships, as well as secret projects like the nuclear bomb. And it's up to you how you play. You can use brute force to take control of your neighbours, or choose diplomacy to create alliances, working together to take over the world. Naturally, as a tank nerd, I love the setting, as World War II was really the pinnacle of armoured warfare, and I love developing my tanks to fit into my doctrine. You can play with the same account on PC and mobile, and can get an exclusive free gift by clicking my link in the description. 3500 gold, a week of premium time, and 3 tanks, absolutely free to deploy in any of your provinces to give you a competitive edge. This offer is only valid for 30 days, so don't waste any time. Flame tanks were actually first deployed by the Italians, with their CV-3 LF seeing combat in Ethiopia in 1935 before being used by Italian expeditionary troops in Spain. The German volunteers, equipped with Panzer Ones, were unhappy with their machine gun wielding vehicles, and modified their tanks by replacing the right hand MG with a nozzle of a Kleine Flammenwerfer backpack flamethrower. This worked, but the range was far too short, and there was very little fuel. This didn't stop the Africa Corps using the same modification four years later however, using their Panzer I flams to dislodge the stubborn defenders that were entrenched around Tobruk. It was clear a dedicated flame vehicle might be quite useful. Maybe unsurprisingly, the Panzer II was the next vehicle to go flame mode, and this was an actual factory produced variant, SDKFZ-122, or more commonly known as the Panzer II flam. This vehicle would see a new superstructure mounted on the hull of the Panzer II D or E, with the cannon in the turret removed and replaced with a centrally mounted MG-34. The spicy parts were all at the front, with two Spritzköpfe spray heads mounted on the fenders of the vehicle. These could each rotate 180 degrees, with each having its own supporting apparatus consisting of 160 litres of fuel, two compressed nitrogen cylinders and plenty of acetylene to light the mixture. The 12 ton vehicle housed a crew of three. The commander sat in a turret operating the MG, the flamethrowers and directing the tank, with the driver and the co-driver slash radio operator slash backup flamethrower operator sitting in the front hull. 87 were completed and before these vehicles even saw combat, a second production batch of 150 was ordered in March 1940. But by December 1941, the decision was made to convert all of these vehicles into Martyr II tank hunters, fitting them with Pac 36R anti tank guns. Clearly, priorities had changed once the Germans went up against KVs and T 34s. In theory, these new vehicles would follow the Armoured Flame Battalion manual. Panzer Flammwagen are close combat weapons for the Panzer Truppe. They were to be utilised to expedite the destruction of the enemy in situations where success with other weapons is not achievable. Panzer Flammwagen have a strong demoralising effect on the enemy. Support or not, the Panzer II Flams only saw limited success. 30 metres was still incredibly short range, and tanks aren't all that manoeuvrable. Operating this close, it was incredibly easy for the vehicles to be flanked or immobilised, especially with the Soviets possessing potent anti-tank guns and rifles. 14.5mm of side armour can only do so much. It was clear that a better armoured and longer range solution was needed, and this solution was, strangely, French. Step 1. Capture your enemy's silliest tanks. Step 2. Slap a Spritzkopfer onto it. I am of course talking about the Panzer B2F, a captured and modified version of the French B1 BIS heavy tank. These vehicles were originally designed with a low velocity 75mm howitzer mounted in the hull, but the B2F saw this replaced with one of the spray heads from the Panzer II Flam. All 24 vehicles were issued to Panzer Eibtelung 102, which arrived on the Eastern Front a day after Operation Barbarossa began. The B2 Flam was a lot better armoured than the Panzer II version, but was armed with the same short range flamethrower, so its flaming effectiveness was limited, especially for a relatively slow vehicle. 
As a result, the Germans decided to replace the nitrogen-driven flamethrower system with a pump-driven system designed by Kuba, which was capable of spraying fuel out 45 meters away. The new system's pump was driven by its own auxiliary motor mounted inside the B2, with a large armoured fuel tank welded onto the rear of the vehicle. The Char B1 had proved the new system could work, but the vehicle was outdated, slow, and only available in limited numbers. It was time for an upgrade, this time to the Panzer III. The new flame system would be even better in this dedicated flamethrower, with a more powerful engine propelling unlit fuel to around 50 meters and lit fuel to 60 meters away. I'm not really sure why these values are different for unlit and lit fuel, so if anyone knows the physics behind it, please do let me know in the comments. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. The Panzer III Flam, also known as SDKFZ 141-3, was an extremely straightforward modification. The main gun was removed and the new flame projector was fitted with a large metal shroud around the barrel to allow the vehicle to blend in a bit better with actual Panzer III's. Around 100 of these vehicles were produced in the spring of 1943 and were deployed with varying degrees of success. Some combat reports talk about flam wagons successfully sneaking up to and destroying enemy tanks by setting them alight, whereas others emphasise how visible and how vulnerable the flam panzer could be. The conclusion was that the stars needed to align for the flame tanks to be successful. They also recommended thicker armour and the addition of armour skirts to the vehicles to protect them better from AT rifles. There was a brief attempt during this period to equip some Stug 3s with the same flame projector, and 10 were completed, but none ever saw combat. The next successful flame vehicle wasn't a Panzer at all, but you may be familiar with it if you've ever played Company of Heroes 2, the Flam Panzerwagen. This was a flamethrower variant of the SD KFZ 251 half track, mounting twin flame projectors staggered on each side of the vehicle. These projectors were the same as those used on the Flam Panzer 3, but with only one pump, it meant the range would have if both were fired at the same time. It was by far the most numerous Flam vehicle, with at least 293 produced by the end of 1944. Combat reports discussed that a reckless charge, fully employing the flamethrowers, hand grenades and machine pistols, must follow after a quick scouting patrol. Personally, I wouldn't fancy my chances doing a reckless charge in a lightly armoured open top vehicle with 700 litres of fuel inside it, but it seemed to work. The last vehicle to see combat was the Flam Panzer 38, which is a modified Jagdpanzer 38T using the same Kuba flame projector and a dummy gun. Only 20 were ever made in the last months of 1944, but they were very successful. The Hetzer was a small, fast vehicle, especially without the gun, and had very thick frontal armour while being a relatively small target for enemy gunners. Complaints were made yet again about the range and the irritatingly thin barrel shroud, which was prone to getting damaged and causing malfunctions. And, as is tradition at the end of all my World War II Germany videos, it then gets a bit out of hand. Hitler decided in December 1944 that the Tiger, and maybe even the Jagdtiger, would be excellent flamethrowing vehicles. The Tiger was no longer in production, so the theory was that vehicles that came back with turrets damaged beyond repair could be then repurposed as turretless, up-armoured flamethrowers. The hull of the tank would house an improved projector, reverting back to high-pressure nitrogen to enable the vehicle to hurl fuel up to 140 metres away. With the Tiger's thick frontal armour and this massive boost to range, this could have been a capable flamethrowing vehicle. But given that it was spring 1945, that was just a pipe dream. One prototype may have been completed around April, but due to the end of the war, the Flam Tiger project never saw the light of day. So, there you have it. Six and a half examples of how situational flamethrower tanks can be. And these weren't just German issues either. All nations sort of fell out of love with the weapon after the Second World War. There were simply other munitions that could do the job a lot better, with a lot less risk. That being said, there were, and still are, successful flamethrower systems, but I doubt we will ever see them used on this scale ever again. And thanks again to Call of War for sponsoring this video, the free online PvP strategy game set in World War II that allows you to choose your own strategy, engage in epic global battles, and take over the world. Remember to use the link in the description to get your free tank bundle, 3500 gold and 1 week premium, valid for the next 30 days. Don't miss out. Thank you so much to my patrons for allowing this video to happen, and thank you all for watching. Do subscribe for more. I'll see you next time.